Anyone else think wars are really boring these days? People shoot guns, other people die, some more people get sad, while other folks get a slightly bigger bit of dirt to live on. And then some Hollywood jerk makes a movie about it and wins a shiny thing for making everyone do a sad face. Where are the giant mechanized mincing machines and mutant octopus laser tanks? Oh well, I guess if we want a little more excitement we'll have to instead look to the history books. Let's do that, shall we, in our list of the seven strangest battles in history. Number 7. The Emu War There's no better way of putting this than by simply stating that Australian soldiers once fought a war against emus. Why? Well, in 1932, Australia had a problem. Emus migrate like regular birds, but because they can't fly, they migrate by foot. And in the 1930s, as many as 20,000 emus migrated from inland areas to the coastal regions of West Australia. These emus began eating crops, destroying fences, and generally causing a ruckus for the local farmers. So they decided to annihilate them. Many of these farmers were former soldiers, and after a group of them successfully convinced the Minister of Defense, Sir George Pierce, to let them have it these feathered felons, they managed to acquire a set of machine guns to mow down the emu hordes. But even with the help of the Royal Australian Artillery, the soldiers only managed to kill a handful of emus in the first few battles, and the soldiers retreated to consider their options. Later efforts proved more successful with more than 2,500 emus massacred by the Australians. But who knows if this brutal assault will provoke terrorist repercussions in the future, especially if the emus forge an axis of evil with a brutal pelican caliphate. Number 6. Horse Beats Boat Your military commander with a troop of horse-mounted men ready to battle on the coast, but your enemy is fleeing across the sea in a fleet of ships. What do you do? Ride the horses towards them and hope to Jesus your way over the water? Yes, that's exactly what you do, especially if the water is frozen. In January 1795, a Dutch fleet was attempting to avoid a battle with the French by escaping to Britain, but their ships were stuck frozen in the Zuiderzee Bay close to the port of Den Helder. So when the opposing general, the appropriately named Johann Willem de Winter, arrived with his Hussar cavalry, they simply made their way onto the ice, surrounded by the stricken ships, and forced the Dutch sailors on board into surrender, making this the only time in recorded history a naval fleet had been defeated by a cavalry charge. Number 5. Is that it? In the 19th century, the United Kingdom possessed the most powerful navy on Earth, and the Brits weren't afraid of flexing their muscles now and then. But occasionally, someone would call their bluff, and on one August morning in 1896, that's exactly what happened. Although the skirmish lasted about as long as a 38-year-old virgin's first time in the sack. Khalad bin Bargash was the newly self-appointed Sultan of Zanzibar who had taken over from the recently deceased pro-British Sultan without getting permission. According to a treaty signed 10 years prior, any new Sultan had to seek approval from the British consul before succession was complete, but Khalid refused, and decided to barricade himself in his palace surrounded by an army of 2,800 guards, servants, and civilians. An ultimatum was given to Khalid, and when this expired at 9am on the 27th of August, a force of three cruisers, two gunboats, 150 Brits, and 900 Zanzibaris came to persuade him. Within two minutes, a bombardment had set the palace on fire, and by 9.40am the battle was over, with 500 casualties on the Sultan's side compared to one single wounded British soldier, who probably just scolded his lips on some really hot tea or something. Number 4. A Gentleman's Disagreement During the 14th century, there is a disagreement over who should rule the Duchy of Brittany in modern-day France. Edward III of England supported the claim of the House of Montfort, whereas Philip VI of France supported the House of Blois. But instead of one house besieging the other in a most ghastly and disagreeable fashion, it was agreed that the two opposing commanders, Robert Burnborough and Jean de Bremore, would each select 30 knights, squires, and champions to formally do battle on a specifically designated battlefield. 30 Frenchmen fought 30 Englishmen for several hours as a crowd gathered to watch, and such was the etiquette of this conflict that a break was observed by both sides 
so that the injured could be treated while refreshments were served. In the end, the British leader Bimboro was killed and his forces lost by nine dead to the French's six after a French squire commandeered a horse and broke the English ranks. The English were taken prisoner, but treated well by their hosts, probably to a lovely hot bath and some croissants, before they were all sent home in time for supper. Number 3. Smoke em out. The Brits are at it again, only this time it's their famous cunning which was to blame for the next strange battle on our list. On the 5th of November 1917, the British army was in the process of pushing back the Ottoman Turk forces into the town of Sharia. But the British weren't having much luck once they became entrenched in the town. And wary of getting involved in yet another bloody World War I battle, they decided to take a different approach, by getting their opponents high as a kite. And we're not talking a mellow high either. We're talking off your face, up in the clouds high. The British dropped a combination of propaganda leaflets and cigarettes onto the Turks, and while they probably ignored the literature, the Ottoman soldiers couldn't pass up the chance of a quick smoke. The problem is, these cigarettes had been laced with opium, and when the British attacked the next day, they found that most of the Ottoman soldiers could barely stand up, let alone repel an entire army, and the British took the town with ease. Number 2. Elrond's All Wrong Before he founded the Church of Scientology, Elrond Hubbard was already demonstrating some serious levels of crazy during his time as a commander in the Navy. And in 1943, he illustrated this perfectly as he ordered his ship to attack an empty ocean floor. Hubbard was in charge of a PC-815 anti-submarine vessel sailing from Portland to San Diego, when on May 19th at 3.40 a.m., Hubbard noticed an anomaly on the sonar. His fellow officers told Hubbard that this was a well-known magnetic deposit found on the seabed, but Elrond wasn't convinced, and decided to call it in as a Japanese submarine. By 9 a.m. the next morning, a massive operation was underway at Hubbard's request to hunt down this imaginary sub involving two cruisers, two Coast Guard cutters, and two airships, with the force dropping more than 100 depth charges over three days of investigation. But even when a report concluded that the sub had never existed and that Hubbard had wasted munitions and time attacking nothing but crabs, he was somehow able to stay in charge of PC-815. However, this didn't last long as a month later Hubbard was finally relieved of his command after he accidentally attacked Mexico. Number 1. The Battle for Castle Itter of all the battles on this list, the battle for Castle Itter is by far the best candidate to be turned into a movie. The conflict took place during the last days of World War II's European theater and involved a US tank battalion attempting to take the Austrian Castle Itter from the German SS Panzergrenadier Division holed up inside, with a little help from Austrian resistance fighters, an ex-tennis star, two former prime ministers, and even the German Workmacht. Castle Itter was a VIP prison used to keep prisoners who could be used later as bargaining chips, but by May 1945, its guards had fled leaving the prisoners alone to defend themselves against the surrounding SS troops. Nearby, Major Joseph Gangle was commander of a small Workmacht force which he had defied in order to retreat and instead turned face to help the local resistance against SS officers who were shooting innocent Austrian civilians. Two of Itter's prisoners were sent out on bicycles to contact Major Gangle, and he agreed to help lead a rescue mission to the castle with the help of a US tank battalion commanded by Captain Jack Lee. When the combined forces of Gangle and Lee got to Castle Itter, they found themselves under attack by between 100 and 150 SS officers. And even though the prisoners in the castle were ordered to hide, they came out and fought alongside the German and American troops. Amongst the prisoners were former French Prime Ministers Edouard Daladier and Paul Reynaud, and the tennis player Jean Barotra, who at one point vaulted the castle wall and made his way through SS ambushes to deliver a crucial message requesting a relief force. Borotra succeeded, and by the time backup arrived later that day, only one man had been killed in defending the castle, Major Joseph Gangle. A hundred SS troops were taken prisoner, the castle was saved, and many of the important French prisoners at Castle Itter went on to shape the entire outlook of post-war France, something which wouldn't have been possible without the cooperation between the Americans, the Germans, 
and a wall vaulting tennis player. So those were the seven strangest battles we could find. And if you want more mysterious old timey action, then take a look at our recent video on the seven strangest historical mysteries that will absolutely baffle you.